Hey everyone, Eric here from Iowa Robot Fighting. So, you want to build a combat robot. This is a series that I've been planning to do for quite a while. Uh, there's been a lot of call for it. There's been a handful of people who have requested it in person and online. So I figured I might as well take the opportunity while I'm in between uh, robot competitions uh, to go over what it costs. Or well, first off, what it, uh, what the internals look like, what they do, um, what you all need to be able to build a combat robot from scratch, what the internals look like, piece by piece breakdown of uh, their independent costs when you order in bulk versus when you uh, order singular items, uh, and then what the cheapest um, internals look like and radio look like for, say, a pusher bot um, or control bot, depending on who you talk to, um, based on my opinion of what the parts should be. And again, this is all my opinion, and I am entirely open to anyone who wants to in the comments, feel free to uh, list what you have in your combat robot, uh, what your cost breakdown is. It's a great exercise for being able to figure out if you could cut down the costs because you're ordering incorrectly or you could change a minor part that actually improves it and reduces the costs. I've noticed that a little bit myself. So the plan is here to, in this video, I'm gonna do the cost breakdowns and show you some little basics about it. Uh, and then following videos in this series, which will all be in a YouTube playlist, um, building an actual budget robot for the price or as close as possible to the price uh, as I have set out in this video. Because a lot of beginners don't have a lot of cash that they want to throw around in getting a Viper kit and a Viper kit without any weapons, just a control bot Viper kit for one pound for your radio, your battery, your charger, of course, and the, the robot itself costs you almost $250. And you'll see, and I'll compare at the, the end what my kit, my build costs. Mine isn't a kit, obviously, and neither is what I'm advocating for here. So you have to invest in some tools if you don't have any and things like that, which I will go over in the next video in this series. Um, but $250 is a lot, especially for young kids starting off. And you're not really learning much when you're putting together a Viper kit. It's all laid out for you. You don't have to put too much thought into it. Um, so basic parts. Let's take a look, shall we? So there's a handful of basic components uh, and all of them are pretty interchangeable. Some are combined. Uh, that sometimes ups the cost because you're doing weight savings. But the first item you need besides your radio, in conjunction with the radio, you need a receiver. So a receiver is a pretty straightforward device. It has an antenna on it. It receives the signals from your radio, translates that into control input for your robot. A lot of the modern receivers, uh, a lot of the modern radios and receivers uh, are programmable. Um, back in the day when I first started in RC car racing, uh, there wasn't the 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio receiver combo, you actually had a frequency that was a crystal that you had to plug into the back. Uh, you could have interference, there could be people on the same frequency as you. It was a whole hassle. These were just rolling out and they were highly expensive back then. Now they're extremely affordable, especially at the short ranges you're talking about. The Fly Sky here that I have. Um, is actually made to broadcast a signal over a mile away for RC planes, which is originally what I bought it for. Um, so first thing, receiver. Receiver then plugs into uh, a very important device called a speed control. So this, there are multiple types of speed controls dependent on what sort of motor you are connecting to. And I have a handful of different ones here. Um, this is a single brushed speed control. So this is for brushed motors. 
I, they'll, brush motors typically have two wires coming off of them um, or a combination uh, plug. Uh, you've got your brushless uh, speed control here, which is specifically for, in combat robotics, typically used for uh, weapons. Um, these will have three control, uh, three power cables coming off, three power cables going into your um, into your motor itself, uh, which all lead to the individual uh, electromagnets that are inside. And uh, that is a more complex, and it used to be a lot more expensive um, speed control motor combo, which it still kind of is, but only in a percentages game. Uh, and then this one here is actually a dual uh, speed control. So it actually allows for two separate inputs plugging into two different channels in your receiver, uh, which your receiver plugs will look like these. That, those will feed into, uh, with the silver side up, plug into the three prongs into your receiver, just like that, okay? But this hooks up to two separate brushed motors. This is a twin or dual uh, motor speed control, which is very useful uh, when you're worried about timings of your uh, motor activation, which really helps uh, when keeping a twin motored robot running in the same direction with your tank controls. So past that, we get into the different types of motors. Uh, when we're talking about the, the uh, brushed motors, we're talking about these these types with the twin cables coming off of them, usually with electrodes that you have to solder to or put a plug on. Um, these are your, uh, these have a gearbox on them, but they are usually cost effective and have a, a considerable amount of weight savings because you don't have a huge number of magnets uh, in them as compared to your brushed or your brushless. So your brushed motors tend to be used for uh, your control drive, your actual like movement of the robot. Um, and I'll get into, you know, my choice in motors dependent on cost of build and uh, what they're specifically used for here in a little bit. And the last major thing for your robot is a battery. So there are two major cell types listed as an S rating. Uh, on your on your lipo batteries, most people use uh, lithium polymer batteries, um, which are uh, listed as LIPO batteries or lipo. Um, a lot of them will have two sets of cables coming off of them. Uh, the twin plug is specifically for going into uh, your speed control, your your power splitter, whatever you need specifically um, for driving the actual robot. This other multi-pin complex plug, uh, this is for charging and balancing. You can charge directly through this. However, uh, it is not going to balance the, the individual cells. So you can actually see if you, you look close enough here, you can see layers in this in the side. Each one of these is an individual cell giving off, if I remember correctly, 3.3, 3.3 volts. Yeah, that would make sense. No, no, it's, it's, this one is 11.4 uh, volts combined. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen over here to show you the breakdown of the cells um, and the, um, the power. I can't remember off the top of my head uh, how much voltage per cell, but they add up and the voltage then comes out as a combined uh, combined cell uh, series right here. However, uh, if you're plugging this into a charger, you want to make sure that each cell is filled up to its maximum. And to do that, you get a charger balancer uh, and plug this in and then go through your instructions for charging lipos. Now, a two cell is going to operate uh, very similarly, different voltage, more cells, more power, more voltage, I should say. Uh, and then you also have a milliamp hour rating. Now, milliamp hours are how long the battery is going to last. So you have your voltage 
and your milliamp hours. Those are the two major factors. Um, you can also get into your amperage of the motor, your peak amperage, or sorry, of your battery, peak amperage, uh, you know, uh, constant current, things like that. There's a whole bunch of different factors, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Um, and I don't really dig into in depth uh, for my own robots. All I care is that the milliamp hours are high enough. And in most cases, about 300 milliamp hours is, is enough to be able to operate the uh, robot for the two to three minutes uh, that it needs for an extended fight. My robot will actually run, my, my bad touch robot will run almost nine minutes uh, with the with the weapon motor spinning on a 300 milliamp hour battery uh, with the three cells. Um, when you're dealing with a control bot, depending on what your speed control settings, or not settings, but uh, specifications are, uh, a two cell might be the only thing that your speed controls can handle or your motors can handle because of the amount of voltage uh, that a three cell will put out versus a two cell. So those are all things to take into account. And the major factor there is the voltage of the motor, the voltage of, or the, the voltage rating of the speed control. And then you have to pick a battery that works for those components. So that out of the way, the other external component that is highly important is your wheels and hubs. Now I've gotten into this quite a lot because I have developed my own hubs, but you can get finger tech hubs as well, but you're talking about, well, you're talking a considerable amount of money for just one set of hubs and the wheels themselves are just foam and quite expensive. Um, I've run them before. They are effective. Uh, they're highly tuned. They're precisely what you want if you want precision. I tend to build slop into my robot in order to ensure that I can run less precise parts uh, at a lower cost because I like to know that I don't need to cry after my robot has been, had its wheels torn apart. So those are all the basic components. Uh, that doesn't include uh, the weapon. The weapon now uh, is mostly a combination of uh, similar parts. So for my purposes and almost everybody else, we run brushless, uh, yeah, brushless motors. And of course we have to run a brushless speed control with that brushless motor for whatever weapon combination it is, unless it's some form of control bot. And then it's either going to be relying on a wedge or some immobile uh, sort of item to be able to deflect hits and push things around and playing the ground game or it might be a flipper at which point you could use a servo and there are really high speed high torque servos uh, that are able to move at about 40 degrees in like a tenth of a second they're insanely fast a lot of them can lift like 30 pounds um, and they're relatively light. You can get those and you can create a relatively nice lifting arm with them. I've never tried. I'm considering doing that for a future robot. Um, but a servo is also an option. And that is essentially just a really controlled gearbox and uh, small motor. And it also hooks up directly to your receiver. Um, and um, the other major factor is once you add an active weapon, uh, you're going to be asked to have some form of safety switch. Now, I've developed my own safety switch, uh, very similar to Fingertech's safety switch. Fingertech safety switch is, like all of their stuff, really expensive, but tends to be quite durable, also workshop to hell, so it's very... Uh, tight and exactly what you need if you don't have the means to be able to produce your own like I can. Um, that safety switch is usually an Allen key that you screw a screw down. It makes, two it makes a contact with two sort of diodes on the inside. So fancy talk for uh, two pieces of copper. Uh, so you put your screw through the two pieces of copper it completes the circuit, allows electricity through, and that is how you end up having power flow to your robot and 
that guarantees that your robot shouldn't turn on unexpectedly. You have to wind this screw all the way down. And uh, then the weapon itself. Um, for my purposes, I forge my own, uh, which if you take a look at uh, some of the weapon forging videos, which I'll post one up right here. Uh, if you want to click on that and take a look at uh, my experiments in creating my own forged weapon blades, uh, feel free. Uh, but the gist of it is I can produce, because I have a forge and anvil and hammers and everything that I need, I can produce my own weapon blades. But uh, other people might uh, go to Fingertech or other uh, manufacturing uh, places and have titanium or AR-500 uh, weapons produced, which can run anywhere between $20 and $100 per item, which if you have the money to spend on that, they are going to be balanced. They are going to do exactly what you want every time, and they're going to be nearly indestructible, unlike mine. Uh, but that's why I put together more than one. So that is everything it takes to put together a uh, combat robot except for the body. Uh, the body is down to your discretion. Uh, in a future video, what I'm going to do is show you how you can take all of these base components, the really inexpensive stuff, and create a test bot that there's no way it would ever hold up in an arena, but I will take essentially just a piece of cardboard and some, uh, some tape and put everything to that cardboard, put the wheels on it, and drive it around. It's the fastest way to solidify in your head that it's possible. Um, and so before I get into uh, the cost of doing something like that, I am gonna go through what Bad Touch actually ran me. <sighs> so I have the full cost breakdown and if this isn't something you're interested in, uh, you can fast forward to uh, the next chapter uh, in this uh, video, but for those of you interested in what uh, my budget build bad touch cost, let's go. So the uh, the FS6B receiver with the fail safe, uh, it's a pretty standard uh, radio for this type of uh, type of application and also for RC planes, like I said before. Uh, this combination, uh, let's see, costs uh, $70 right now. Uh, there's actually less expensive alternatives. Back when I bought this, it was only 40 bucks, but I'm doing the current value of these things. And I buy individual extra receivers because I'm almost guaranteeing that at some point my robot's gonna get ripped into. Someone like Theseus or one of the other high-end robots is gonna get a hold of my electronics and rip it to shreds. And the last thing I want is to be reliant on a single receiver. Uh, the single receivers, uh, those cost roughly $18 uh, to be able to get additional ones. And I have a ton of them, so I don't really have to do any more investment there. Uh, like I showed you guys before, uh, I'm running the dual uh, ECS. Uh, this can be bought in bulk, but individually uh, it runs roughly $17. Uh, you can buy a bulk of four for like $37. works out to being about $9.25 a piece if you buy them in bulk. Uh, then we've got inside the robot for its drive, uh, I'm running Spark, uh, FingerTech Spark. Uh, motors, silver sparks to be specific. Um, I'm running two of those. Uh, those run me $17.46 each American, uh, so $34.92 for the pair. Uh, then I've got the uh, Jenigan. I can't print, I can't figure out how to pronounce it. I don't even know if it's supposed to be pronounced. It's the 300 uh, milliamp hour battery that I was showing before. Uh, that uh, is bought in a series of two. I don't think they sell individuals. Uh, so for both of them, it was like 25 bucks. Uh, the actual cost of an individual one is about 1230. Um, then my wheels, obviously you guys have seen those. My wheels are home built. They're only about seven cents a piece. Um, so the two is about 14 cents. 
And then my, uh, my hubs that go into those that are made out of aluminum, which I went into a couple of videos ago, um, those are about 30 cents each, including the hardware that you need to be able to attach them. So that ends up being about 60 cents uh, for those. So 74, 75 cents for my wheels uh, in total, which actually worked really well, surprisingly. Uh, for my first attempt in making an aluminum hub. Uh, they had a little bit of a wobble in them, but that was no big deal. That can be worked out. So without the radio, the just the drive systems of my robot uh, run me about $46.96. Uh, with the radio for the drive systems, it's about 116.95. So figure 120 bucks with the radio. Uh, without the radio, it's about $50. Um, then once you throw the uh, weapon into the mix, so I'm running uh, these uh, 2212 uh, 1000 kV uh, motors, which I've modified uh, by chopping the axle off of. Um, because I don't need it, as you guys have seen from previous videos, um, I'm running the Brazilian drive. So that ends up working out. Um, these motors singly are just about $13, uh, and you can buy them in a bulk of six uh, for $43.88, so that ends up being $7.31 per when bought in bulk. Uh, which I do need to restock. I'm running out of those, uh, and I use them for RC planes too, but I like the 2200 KVs for my RC planes. Um, then uh, brushless speed controllers. I need one of these in my robot for running that, running my weapon. Uh, so that ends up being uh, $1189 each, but you can again buy these in bulk, four, four of them for $35.69, so $892 in bulk. Uh, then the safety switch. So the safety switch, uh, because I had to buy a sheet of copper for this and some hardware, and then I 3D printed the rest. Uh, these are almost 50 cents a piece, um, which is a considerable savings compared to um, what you'd spend with the FingerTech one. And then the weapon blade itself, um, with the hardware attachments and uh, the what I actually spent on the steel and everything, uh, that works out to almost exactly five dollars for that. Um, so that all included. Uh, so non-bulk for the weapon system is about thirty twenty-eight. Uh, bulk brings me down to about twenty-one dollars, twenty-two dollars. Uh, so. You, if you put everything together for the electronics, uh, it turns out to be 147.23, uh, but that doesn't include the aluminum that makes up the rest of the robot uh, so and the hardware. So it's about $5 in aluminum uh, and then $4 or so for hardware, all approximate. So the entire robot, including the radio, runs me $156, little over. So in my opinion, that's not bad, considering that the radio itself is $70. So almost half of my robot cost is my radio and receiver. Not bad. Um, of course, I invest in a lot of additional components. Uh, just in body parts alone, I probably have another 50 or 60 bucks. Um, in additional electronics, I probably have another two or 300. Uh, so my entire like kit that I bring to a robot competition is almost $500. Um, but I prefer to have everything I need to build my robot like four times over. I wanna have a fresh robot every time. And once I invest all that, if none of it gets broken down, I don't really have to reinvest for the next competition. And at this point, I don't, except I do need to do some modifications and things like that. So I might have to replace a handful of things, not because of being broken down, but because of uh, poor design. So take that for what it's worth. Engineering always comes into, into this, and that is my big reason for being a part of this. Um, so for those of you who are in this for building your first robot, you've never built a robot before 
and you want to get into building just something that moves and makes you feel like an engineer. Let's get into it. So the first thing you need is a radio. Now, like I said, this is an out of date uh, Fly Sky radio. It's actually more expensive. There's no reason to get this one. What you want is the uh, FSI6, which is a smaller version of this radio. Uh, it actually runs $10 less than this, so it's 60 bucks. There are less expensive alternatives, and I don't use them anymore, but the T6A, which was available on Fingertech, I can't find it anywhere anymore, but it's programmable by a plug into your computer, which was a big pain. Um, I really hated programming this radio, and that's why I swapped away from it and suggest that everyone else does too. Um, you don't really want to have to do that. Programming them, programming them on the fly is a lot better. No pun intended. So the other uh, items, so that includes your, uh, that'll end up including your receiver. So you won't have to worry about buying your first receiver. Um, then you've got your um, brushed ESCs. So like I said, I use these dual ESCs, but these are relatively expensive for what you're doing. I would suggest getting some 10A brushed ESCs or electronic speed controls. Um, you can get a pair of these for about $14. So seven bucks a piece, major, major savings. You need two of these when running a uh, single input uh, ESCs. They won't be perfectly timed. If you want to upgrade to this, uh, I suggested it's only a couple of bucks, but if you're trying to do the absolute savings, get these. And that would be my suggestion. Each one of these things is going to be listed in my uh, description on the video so that you can see the Amazon listings for these. Um, then you need motors. So the sparks, if you watched the previous segment, uh, are relatively expensive. Uh, they are worth the money if you are really wanting the high torque and the, the reliable capabilities of the FingerTech uh, motors. However, if you're just getting into it, I would recommend that you do a, a, a DC-12 200 RPM. This is from uh, QM Seller on Amazon. You can get a pair of these for $16. Um, and then once you're done with that, you need a battery. Uh, so my batteries are not the least expensive on the market right now. They were at one point. Um, this Spectrum 2S uh, is $9.99 for a single one. Um, I would suggest getting something like that, and then uh, you only have one battery. You're gonna need a charger too. You'll have to look that up and find one that works for you. Um, but that I didn't include in my pricing model. But uh, you can get a really simple charger like this uh, for, I believe it's like $12. Uh, but there are better ones than this, but if you need something simple, you can get something like this. All right, so that is that. You've got everything you need except for the hubs and wheels, which I will get into at another point, um, but you can always get the finger tech ones. Um, there are really simplistic solutions to putting wheels on your robot. Um, which I would suggest if you're doing a junkyard bot uh, just to try and build something that's useful. Um, and I'll get into potential solutions for that. Um, but if you are planning to take this robot into a fight, you're going to want at least one extra receiver and additional parts for this. So the receiver for the i6 is $19. Relatively expensive, but again, you don't want to be caught without it. Um, so without the radio 
and all the parts listed, including that spare receiver being the one you're using, it works out to being about $60, 58 something. With the radio and including that receiver, it's almost precisely $100. You're four cents shy of 100 bucks for all the components I just listed. So you can take all that and then the next video in this series, which might not come out next week, and might not come out in two weeks, but more like probably a month, uh, depending, because I've got some stuff coming up here for uh, doing a scrimmage fight against Evan and his bot. Um, I'm also doing going to do modifications on my bot at some point and show that. So we've got a lot of content that'll be coming out to bring you guys up to speed on where Iowa robot fighting is at, uh, where our competition is going to be uh, improved, uh, and then this series on budget builds and first time builds. So I look forward to showing you guys the rest of this and what you can do to be able to create something cool and spark some creativity in some of our new builders that are just wanting to get into this and don't want to spend the uh, $250 that you have to to be able to get a kit that isn't always available anyway. So everybody be safe out there. I will catch you next time.